So Top Android Apps is back for another episode, the 10th of the year, the October edition, the one after September edition, the one before November edition. I don't care how you label it. It's a new episode. I'm pumped. So let's just get right into the applications. One of the most frustrating things about browsing the web these days are the ads. And so one application that will block them once and for all and protect your browsing experience is today's video sponsor, AdGuard. So AdGuard is an ad blocking service available for both Android and iOS, as well as for Mac and PC. And once installed, the service will remove any ads to keep your browsing experience clean and unobtrusive. The app also works as a privacy protection tool, which means it will block ad trackers from following you online and protect you from malicious and phishing websites. What's great is that the app is actually super lightweight, which means it doesn't impact your device's performance or battery life. And then if you dive into the app settings, you can actually take further control of your browsing experience by adding whitelisted sites or apps or by creating custom ad blocking rules. The best part is that the app is safe, it doesn't require root access, and it comes at a super affordable price. So definitely check it out using the first link down in the description below. The navigation bars on our phones are handy, sure, but they also sometimes just get in the way of what we're doing. And so one app that I've been using lately to really dial in and customize when the nav bar is visible or hidden on my phone is the aptly named Granular Immersive Mode. So you do need to first grant permissions via ADB, but once you've done so, you can run through your entire list of applications, including your home screen launcher, and set whether the navigation bar is hidden, whether the status bar is hidden, or whether both are hidden at the same time. It's super simple, but it works flawlessly and is well worth a go if you're looking to gain more control over your screen real estate. If you fancy yourself as a bit of a cinematographer of any level, then you'll no doubt appreciate the importance of getting your white balance correct in camera. And a really helpful application designed to help with this is Light Spectrum Pro. So with this app, you literally point your phone's camera wherever you want a color reading, and the display will live update with the Kelvin temperature it interprets. And I have to say, it actually seems pretty accurate more often than not. There are also a bunch of graphs and assist tools to help display even more detailed information. And even though the app interface is a little bit clunky and definitely needs some work, the fact that we can get this information for as cheap as this app costs is great. I'm always on the lookout for ways to seamlessly integrate my phone and my computers together for a more streamlined experience. And so one of the best ways that I've found to do that in recent times is by using an application dubbed AirDroid. So once you have this app installed on your phone, you can then remotely access information from that phone on any computer using either the desktop or web client. You can mirror your phone's display, you can view photos and files stored on your phone, you can read and send messages, and you can even share files and sync device clipboard history. Plus, there's a heap of other features available as well. With the move to devices having full screen displays, one of the unfortunate consequences that has come about as a result has been the slow disappearance of the notification LED. But one app that kind of brings back that functionality is Notify Buddy. So the app itself is outrageously simple. You simply switch on or off the functionality on an app by app basis. And once you've done so, each time you receive a new notification, a neat little colored dot will blink on your display and it honestly does a really good job of emulating a notification LED. You can customize the colors of the notification dots as well as tweak the X and Y position. Plus there's a bunch of other settings and tweaks available as well. Now, I'm not 100% sure of the accuracy of this next app, but if you're looking to perform a quick check of your heart rate, maybe after a workout or to see if there are any abnormalities, then a quick and easy way to do so is by using accurate heart rate. So the app uses your phone's camera in combination with the light around you to detect the measurement. And all you have to do is simply place your finger over your phone's main camera sensor, and then the app will begin to capture the data. After a short while, the app will spit out a pulse rate measurement, and I honestly have no real clue how the app is actually able to detect your heart rate just by using the camera, but it's actually been fairly consistent in my testing, which is impressive in and of itself. So it can definitely be helpful and a little bit of fun, but just make sure you don't rely on this application, particularly in a potential emergency situation. If you're someone who would benefit from having access to a second Android device that has root access, whether for development or just experimentation, then you can actually do so on the phone you already own using VMOS. So this is a virtual machine piece of software, which means the app virtualizes another operating system on your phone. And what's great is that you can quickly switch between your real system and the virtual system with just the click of a button. 
As mentioned, you do have the option to enable root access, which is found within the developer options, and you can even install cloned applications. And although it is a bit of a shame that the virtual system runs on Android Lollipop, it is seriously exactly like having a separate phone with a different system altogether. So Android 10 is official and with it we have Google's brand new full screen gestures which are actually pretty neat in my opinion. And if you're looking to try them out on a device that hasn't been upgraded to the new software, then you can do so using QLauncher. Now, a quick disclaimer, for this process to work, your phone does need to be rooted and you also need to install the Quick Switch module via Magisk, which I will link to down below. But once you have and you've set Quick Step as the default launcher and rebooted, then you get full access to the stock Android 10 launcher, which comes with the new full screen gestures. And I've got to say, they work really, really well. You unfortunately don't get access to the new side swipe back gestures as they are system implemented, but you can easily emulate them using an app such as Fluid Navigation. But it's seriously neat that we have a way to try these new gestures out. And if your phone has root access, then I seriously recommend giving it a go. Now, as well as the gestures, Android 10 also sees the introduction of a range of new and improved security measures. But for the many of us who haven't yet been upgraded, one easy way to up our device's security is by using Cameraless. The app is super simple. You basically tap a single button and with that, your phone and every application on your phone for that matter is blocked from accessing the camera. You can block the camera manually or by the time of day and you can even block it by location if you upgrade to the pro version. There's even a whitelisting option to select a range of apps that can still access the camera even with the app enabled. And so it's a versatile little app with security as its main priority. And so finally, if you're on the lookout for a new email application that also lets you take notes, set reminders and assign to-do tasks, then 2Bird is an all-in-one email app currently in early access, but that is definitely worth a go. So the UI is super clean and uncluttered, which is great. And if nothing else, you can set the app up to simply act as your email client and it serves that purpose really well. But then, as I mentioned, you can also take notes, set reminders and create to-do lists, all of which happens directly and will then continue to live within your inbox. There's also a dark mode included as well, which is always very much appreciated. But that is it. Now, as always, each and every application mentioned throughout the video has been included down in the notes below. And if you're looking for more app recommendations, then make sure you check out all of my past top apps videos by clicking the playlist linked here. Finally, let me know down in the comments below if you have any newly discovered applications that you think might be worth featuring in a future episode, and I'll be sure to check them out. But aside from that, that is it. Thank you all very much for watching, and I will catch you later.